Welcome back to We Play Games. I'm Walker, and here we are inside Her Majesty's Government about to do episode four. So this is a game where we're playing as the United Kingdom, but we're focusing on economic imperialism. So we've been expanding our market a whole lot by just buying obligations and inviting people in, but we haven't been doing a lot of imperialism directly. Not yet, at least. But here we have a, a potential war on our hands. So we've started an open market play against Sokoto, because we, we aren't doing conquer states yet. Um, and we started this, this open market play against them, and they called in France. So we're gonna see, if if Sokoto doesn't back down by like here, then we'll add a bunch of war goals against France. Because I, I think it would be, I think it would be flavorful. But I think there probably should also be a rebalancing when it comes to infamy. Taking back the treaty port costs 17 infamy. Conquering Algiers costs 35 infamy. Conquering Poitou costs 32. Alsace Laurent is 32. I mean, like, okay, yeah, Sokoto back down. But but we, we could accumulate tons of infamy if we just demanded tiny bits of the French overseas territory. So I really think that there needs to be a technology later on in the game in like tier three or four that considerably reduces infamy cost when you're taking unincorporated states, especially if you're taking unincorporated states from rivals, it feels like we should be able to take more than just a handful of territory in one war. This is the uh, Imperator problem or the EU Rome problem. Fight a, a decade long war with Carthage to take control of three provinces. And our economy is growing so quickly in terms of this up here that I think it's worth it for us to just drop a couple more uh, construction sectors in into the mix. But you know, it occurs to me that there's something that we haven't done yet that I've been intending to do. We're going to survey a skyscraper site. We'll also be doing some of these expeditions, because of course we will. We haven't, we've now uh, turned Hanover back into a protectorate. So I, I think it's very likely that we're going to prevent Germany from forming here, because we have Hanover, we have Holstein, we have Schleswig, we have Hamburg, and Russia, of course, has their little treaty port here in Pomerania. I feel like we should fight somebody. We, we, we have the opportunity to. Yeah, after this, let's see Let's see who we can fight, because we do have a jingoist in charge of the government here, and a jingoist also in charge of the petite bourgeoisie and the armed forces is in government. We're at 92 legitimacy. We're, yeah, after we put down this little, uh, this little rebellion here, let's find, let's find somebody to fight. Oh, we could fight, we could fight Qing. And the great Mongolian state has become a protectorate. Good. I'm thinking that once we've joined the scramble for Africa, then it would be a lot more flavorful for us to declare wars of conquest against the the unrecognized nations here. So we might start doing that once we uh once we hit the tech. Yeah, you know what? Let's start a uh, liberate subject diplo play against Great Qing, liberating Tibet. And we'll go through and expand our army a little bit. I think it's time. Looks like we we're not going to get our fight with France Auto Sokoto, but we may very well get this fight with Great Qing. Boy, they really want to hold on here, but I, I think this is going to cost them because we're going to get them to liberate uh, Shandong, Anhui, and Shibei. So they're going to lose a, a big chunk of the country. My, my only real question is how much do we need to push around Great Qing before they finally collapse? And I'm, I'm not, not actually sure. They did manage, apparently, to enforce faith, so they dodged the Heavenly Kingdom uprising. I, I want to get malaria prevention on the books. I think it's, I think it's time. So that way we can start really colonizing in here. Because we have been intentionally avoiding anywhere that has severe malaria. I think for, for flavor reasons, if we if we started colonizing too early, then the map would just uh get become too British too fast. Wouldn't have time to become, you know, properly civilized by Her Majesty's government. Yeah, there we go. We're just gonna capitulate Ching with two armies. Is everybody are is their entire army down here? in South China. Yeah, it looks like their entire army might be down there. Yeah, we're just like completely slapping Ching around at this point. This is probably the third opium war or whatever, but it, it they do not have the capacity to fight us. Hey, we got Skyscraper. All right, cool. So once we're done with this uh, current round of building, we are going to go ahead and add in a size 20. Still, yeah, size 20 seems okay, because we're not planning on conquering the entire world here, or at least not directly governing the entire world. Great Ching is at minus 5.96 war exhaustion per tick. And counting, we're so much stronger than Zanzibar that we can actually skip straight to Protectorate. You can do that sometimes. Uh, we have electrical capacitors now, so yeah, we can, let's crank the electricity. 
Yeah, not a lot of not a, not a lot to talk about in this most recent war against Great Ching, other than their complete inability to defeat us. There we go. And now they've been cut in half. Oof, it's gonna be really bad for them. And of course, as the skyscraper becomes finished, it's gonna start employing a lot of people in government administration throughput, which is gonna give us a whole lot of extra bureaucracy. It's gonna be really great when it comes to promoting trade. And trade, of course, is sort of a weapon here, because it is the sort of thing that allows us to get our foot in the door when it comes to trading with, with smaller powers, right? Because we see, ah, if we could just export clothes or luxury furniture, then, then they'll start becoming our friends. And that is sort of the way that this is going. We're at 30 relations with Brazil. Okay, so we're getting closer and closer to being able to turn them into a puppet. And we're eight months from malaria prevention. Okay. All right, there we go. We've completed a skyscraper. So now we're gonna watch as our, our bureaucracy and a little bit of our cost of uh, operating government starts to grow. But at the same time we're gonna do that, let's go ahead and do some surveys. And because we're gonna be working on malaria prevention and expanding in the Congo, I, I think it's flavorful for us to do a, uh, a Congo river. Uh, yes, we got malaria prevention. All right, so with malaria prevention on the books, I feel pretty good saying we can we can switch into whatever we want to in regards to colonization so we're gonna colonize like crazy and you know let's pick up pneumatic tools actually pneumatic tools is gonna be really helpful because we we're always gonna be desperately short on hardwood kind of no matter what we're doing but now we joined the scramble for africa i feel okay now doing uh conquests against these countries the unrecognized countries now that we're in the scramble for Africa mode. Well, now coincident with the uh, the arrival of vulcanization within the UK and our the growth of our rubber industry, uh, we actually are hitting 19 relations here with Brazil, which means we can make this into a puppet. So this is this is going to be a big one. Let's see if, if we can get Brazil as a puppet for Seven Infamy and if anybody comes out of the woodwork to fight us. Ecuador is deciding to to help out Brazil. Hmm. We, if nobody else jumps in to support Brazil, we might add a uh, puppet Ecuador as well, because th that's just unacceptable. That's the sort of behavior that gets you in trouble. Ah, and Russia has sided with them. All right, let's see, let's see how this goes. Russia is going to be a pretty easy one to beat, so if they're the only guys who who support Brazil. We'll add war goals probably to liberate Lithuania and the Ukraine, because that would be a pretty big uh, beatdown. Maybe we'll take Alaska. I don't know. It depends on how much infamy this is. Ah, Brazil backed down. All right, there we go. Brazil is red. Ooh. All right, Mexico has broken their alliance with us. All right. Ah, revolutionary orange. All right. Papua has launched an uprising against us. Well, that's not going to go well for them. And now thanks to our really, really huge uh, colonial affairs institution, as well as these colonial exploitation uprisings, we're going to be able to colonize really quickly. All right, and we've completed the uh, exploration of the Niger River, and we're completing the Suez and Panama Canal surveys as well. All right, well, there's been a diplomatic shakeup at, back at home. Uh, our good friend, uh, died in our, our jingoist died and now we have a republican in control of the uh, industrialist party so the industrialists are going to be a little less useful to us generally than they had been um but we do have the armed forces around and they are abolitionists and so we're gonna say all right armed forces you say that ending slavery is the is the way so we're gonna start doing ban slavery war goals and then if anybody doesn't back down, we'll, we'll also conquer their state. I feel okay doing this secondary follow-up here because we have explored the Congo and the Niger. We now have the proper technology required in malaria prevention, and we're in the scramble for Africa. So I think if if we really wanted to stick to our guns and, and only expand via protectorates, we could. But the problem there is that a lot of these nations are going to be in uh in protect our borders and with the defend the borders thing online it's almost impossible to get them to become protectorates oh man no we might we might go straight for uh banned slavery on ottoman empire and just release a whole bunch of territory that would be pretty strong yeah you know what let's go ahead and uh let's end slavery in the ottoman empire and liberate iraq and bulgaria and let's liberate syria while we're at it and grab some Ottoman war reparations. Russia has sided with the Ottoman Empire. All right, well, that makes sense. And the Ottoman Empire has backed down. There we go. 
Native uprisings. All right, well, we'll have to put those down before we can continue our war against slavery. And another native uprising, wow. Yeah, the eight, late 1860s, early 1870s, apparently, we're, are just going to be uprising after uprising. But that makes sense, because we are in colonial exploitation now. So we are uh, encountering natives that we'd been avoiding for quite some time, and now we are not treating them even particularly well as we expand in these territories. Whoa, now we potentially have a dangerously huge Chartist party? But this might be useful for a very specific reason, because... Her Majesty's government is going to rely upon the advice and, and consent of the people here. Um, but one thing that we've been meaning to switch into is proportional taxation. Proportional taxation is going to shift around the burden internally quite a lot, but it's going to be really helpful if we can get it passed because it'll dramatically increase our, our amount of taxes here. This would be huge if we got it through. Ooh, and we got trench works. Awesome. And now that we have proportional taxation, we should have uh, a pretty easy time balancing the budget while also expanding our growth. Oh, right, the uh, the Netherlands over here are having problems. Well, we will help the, the Dutch put their problems down, but now we've reduced a uh, relationship with Belgium enough that we can actually turn them into a puppet, so we will do that. All right, so I think that's going to be episode four of Her Majesty's Government. We've managed to snag quite a lot of stuff going on out here. Um, we have the Sinai, we have the Suez and Panama Canals both set up, which is going to be really helpful for us because it's going to save us a lot of convoys when it comes to trade and our uh, supply networking. And we are expanding here in Africa. Wow. We, with malaria on, with the uh, malaria prevention technology online and this massive incorporated population, we are able to colonize incredibly quickly, but we are... We are getting pretty close to, to probably needing to fight a war with somebody, one of these great powers out here. All we really need in order for our budget to be working a little better is for the industrialists to be not so mad about the, uh, the recent move to proportional taxation. But if we can come up with a way to make them happy, although it will not be abandoning the monarchy, we will. Because once the, the industrialists are powerful and happy, then job creators just creates an, an insane amount of investment pool. And that's all we really need in order to, to grow our economy here. That and pops. Because, boy, we are just industrializing the United Kingdom like crazy out here. We're going to paint the entire map as urban centers. Oh, yeah. All right. So that's, uh, that's episode four. I'm Walker. Take care.